Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspirational Moments. I am Reverend Glendale Miller from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. This program is designed to inspire, motivate, and encourage as you make a difference right where you are. I invite you in prayer. O oh God, our Father, we are grateful. We are appreciative of your goodness, your grace. Thank you for yet another marvelous opportunity. Bless our efforts, we pray. May your people be strengthened and encouraged. This we ask in your Son's name. Amen. I point you this morning to the book of Job, the 19th chapter, and our focus is on verse number 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand upon the latter day upon the earth. I want to share with you a word that the Lord has given to me for this hour. Some things you ought to know. Some things you ought to know. There are two particular words that stands out in this particular passage that is necessary for us to define there is the word revelation which speaks to disclosure of something not previously known and then there is the word redeemer to buy back or to get back to recover as by paying a fee As I look at those words, Revelation and Redeemer, I was in prayer and the Lord gave me this word out of the book of Job, when Job declared that I know my Redeemer liveth. Job knew his Redeemer lives. Through all his pain and sorrow, he knew. Through the death of his children, he knew. Through the strange words of his wife, he knew through the voice of his so-called friends, he knew. No matter how bad things had gotten for Job, he knew his Redeemer lives. That statement, brothers and sisters, means not that he would live or that he could live, but that Job knew that at that present moment, his Redeemer lived and lives. My family, no matter how bad things may become, no matter how bad your finances become, or your health, no matter how hard life comes at you. Remember 
that your Redeemer lives. God is not uh, left the precincts of eternity. God has not dismissed himself from the throne. Our Redeemer lives. There are some things, my family, that you ought to know. Job is a very interesting and somewhat mysterious character in the Bible. While most Bible readers are familiar with Job and the great trials he faced in life, little is known about his background. He is believed to have lived around the time of Abraham, with the book of Job being possibly the first written portion of scripture. The book opens with a description of Job being in the land of Oz, a man who walked upright, a man who feared God and sought to avoid evil. As we are introduced to Job, we immediately discover a man who was committed to the Lord and the things of God. Often when we consider Job, the emphasis is placed on his suffering. No doubt Job has brought great comfort and hope to many down through the ages facing trials and adversity in life. His integrity and commitment during a season of great loss is to be admired and imitated by those who walk with the Lord. While I have received great comfort and guidance from other portions of this precious book, our text may be the greatest passage within the entire book. Clearly, as one reads the book, Job had many questions that he was unable to answer. He was dealing with a season of loss and great uncertainty. However, in the midst of his pain, Job remained certain of the Lord he served and the relationship he shared with him. I believe, my family, this passage is key to Job's survival during this horrific trial in life. His awareness of the Lord should serve as a reminder to all of us, bringing hope and comfort even in the midst of our greatest trials. My, Job says, I know my Redeemer lives. Job knew the Redeemer, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. This profound statement followed a long discussion Job had with friends who had supposedly come to comfort him in his trial. Unfortunately for Job, they offered little comfort. The friends sought to convince Job that there must have been sin in his life that brought the suffering and great loss he had endured. They believed God had punished Job and surely Job needed to repent and return to God. By reading the book of Job, we know that God 
had permitted Satan to attack Job. He had lost his family, his wealth, and during a second attack, Job had lost his health. From an outside perspective, Job had lost it all. His life lay in ruins. And I'm sure Job wondered why all of this had come upon him. He questioned the events in his life. There was much he did not understand or know. And yet he was certain of one thing of preeminent importance. Job knew the Lord. He had a personal relationship with God. He walked with the Lord, striving to honor and serve him daily. Job had lost much that pertained to his physical life, but he had not lost his relationship with God. I want you to know, my family, that as we go through a very difficult period in our history, a pandemic, the loss of jobs, finances are at an all-time low. We have lost our loved ones and some of us are losing our health. Some are infected with the coronavirus. I want to encourage you this morning in the midst of all this lostness, don't lose your relationship with God. As I studied this passage, I came to a profound realization. Not only did Job know the Redeemer, but listen to me, my family, the Redeemer knew him. Consider the words of God in Job 1 and 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God. Job was unaware of this conversation. He had no idea what was about to happen in his life. And prior to all of that, the Lord was mindful of Job and the life he lived. Those who are in Christ, not only know the Lord, we are known of him. He is aware of our lives and mindful of us. John 10 and 14 puts it this way, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. 2 Timothy 2 and 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Job knew that his Redeemer lives. For I know, says Job, that my Redeemer liveth. This may not have meant much to the friends who questioned Job and his integrity. Their lives had not suffered such loss. They were not in such dire straits, but however, this single statement sums up the commitment and focus of Job at this moment in his life. He may have lost it all, with no way of knowing where his life was headed. At this point in life, he would have to start over. Job knew very little at this moment, but he knew one thing for certain. 
His Redeemer liveth. His hope was not in an idol made of man's hands, one which had no power. He did not worship a monument that lacked the ability to see, hear, or move in his situation. Job knew he served a living God. He served the eternal, omnipotent God. His God was aware of his situation. He was alive and well, able to meet whatever need Job faced. Life had not been kind to Job in recent days, but his misfortune had not altered the existence or power of the God he served. I don't know of anyone who has suffered as Job did, but he but we all face difficulty and pain. We all suffer loss from time to time. Face difficult moments. We are forced to deal with the uncertainty that lies ahead. We cannot know what tomorrow may bring. But we can know, glory to God, who holds tomorrow. We are not serving an idol made of hands. We serve a living God. Job endured the most horrific treatment man could possibly face. He was falsely accused and condemned to death for crimes he had not committed. He was scourged and beaten beyond recognition by sinful men. But like our Christ, uh, who was crucified on a Roman cross, Job's experience was similar. Job experienced almost the same treatment like our Lord. While he may not have been physically beaten, Job was beat down by the cares of this world. He was beaten down by his friends and their negative advice that was offered. All of this was to be. And I want to encourage you this morning that there are some things you ought to know. We spend so much time on unimportant things. We ought to know that our Redeemer liveth. The reason why so many people are running all over the place in panic and in fear is because they don't know that their Redeemer liveth. The reason I am able to stand, the reason I'm able to testify, the reason I'm able to have this abiding confidence in the midst of a global catastrophe that is going on in our world is because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, my Redeemer liveth. That's the challenge for you, brothers and sisters. You ought to know. There are some things you and I ought to know. We ought to know one thing, and that is that God is very much alive. I know that my glory to God, Redeemer, liveth. How do you know he lives? Well, he's still at work, working things out for you and working things out for me and turning things around. My Redeemer liveth. Your Redeemer liveth. Our Redeemer, he lives. God is not 
dead. God, glory to God, is very much alive. We serve a real God. We serve an alive God. We serve a God who is still in control of this world. That's the challenge for all of us this morning. My God is real. He's not dead. Why not this beautiful morning? Put your trust in a God who is still active, still operating, still involving himself in the affairs of humanity. My God my God is real. Good God Almighty. Our Father in heaven, I bless you. I thank you. Yes, my Redeemer liveth. Yes, he is alive. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. We can face the challenges of life. We can face any challenge any crisis that come our way thank you gracious God this morning that your spirit will rise up in the hearts of your people and cause them to recognize that you are real you are alive you are still at work in our lives thank you Jesus thank you this morning that you're working things out thank you that you have worked things out for us and we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor and we give you all that is due to your mighty name yes this morning run with this Rima revelatory word this morning my redeemer liveth do let fear strangle you do let intimidation box you in know that you know that you know that you know that your glory to God redeemer lives Oh, I'm so glad this morning. That's why I've been running a long time. And I've come to the realization, my family, that my God is very real. He, he liveth, he liveth, good God Almighty, he liveth and he will do for you right this very moment what you are unable to do for yourselves god bless you this morning and god strengthen you is our prayer if you've never made a confession of faith you don't know him as lord and master come on why not invite him to have right away with you right this very moment just say lord come into my life Purge me, cleanse me, create within me a clean heart and make me a brand new person. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you wish to correspond with Reverend Glenn, his mailing address is gemiller64 at hotmail.com or you can call him. 467-8939 we'll talk with you again tomorrow with another inspirational word from God may the blessings of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Ghost be yours now and always have yourselves a wonderful morning God bless you